Well, welcome back to the Offbit. Today we'll be upgrading this e-machine laptop from a 2 gig Pentium to a 4 gig i5. So come along and watch us wrestle this machine into an upgrade. This is the eMachine E729Z. The eMachine brand is currently owned by Acer Incorporated as of from 2007. Our machine comes with 2 gig of RAM and has an Intel Pentium P6200. So we are very keen to replace the CPU and give this laptop an extra 2 gig of RAM while we're there. We received this machine with a dead hard drive so we have already installed a 120 gig Western Digital Green SSD and installed Windows 10 on as well. The i5 that we have selected today for the upgrade is the i5-520M from Intel. This CPU has two cores and four threads with a base clock of 2.4 GHz. The CPU can boost clocks on one core up to 2.93 GHz. It has 3 MB of level 3 cache and a TDP of 35 watts. We are removing the existing 2 GB of RAM and replacing it with 4 GB of RAM which are in a 2x2 2 2 GB stick kit. These sticks are both DDR3 1333MHz sodium sticks. I think it's time to pull this machine apart. When doing upgrades for most laptops, you will need a jeweler's screwdriver or we'd recommend a jeweler's screwdriver set. We would also recommend using guitar pick or a spudger. You can use a guitar pick or a spudger to get right in between the plastic to release those plastic clips. Using a flat blade screwdriver to do this can leave scratches or indentations in the plastics at the joints. Removing all power from the laptop is recommended. So yes, you will need to remove the battery. Usually the battery will be hiding screws to be removed anyway. Once the battery is removed, methodically remove all the screws on the back of the laptop. We started by removing the access panel to the RAM and hard drive. It's always a good idea to put your screws in a place where you remember where they went. So some sort of organisation is a good idea. Another tip that we didn't do, and trust me you want to do this, remove the hard drive at this point. Once all screws are removed off the back, flip over and pull the keyboard out. There's little clips along the top that you'll need to run your spudger, and we used a flat blade screwdriver just to push the little tabs in. Once removed, take all the cables out and unscrew all the screws in the plastic top. Once you're certain all cables are free, you can pull the plastic off. Now we have access to the motherboard, you need to remove all screws from the motherboard and disconnect all cables that are connecting on the motherboard. We did leave the monitor cable in, but you can take it out if you wanted to. You also need to remove the CPU fan by the three screws. There's a power cable underneath the motherboard that needs to be disconnected and you're good to flip. Now we're ready to remove the heatsink. Now there is a number screwing pattern on the heatsink. We just did the reverse order on the removal. So we went from four to one with removing the screws. Disconnect the fan cable from the motherboard and the CPU should be pretty easily removed from here on in. You'll need a jeweler's flat blade screwdriver to remove the CPU. Just turn anti-clockwise on the little plastic screw. This will release the CPU so you can easily remove it. Placing the new CPU, making sure pin 1, which is shown by a triangle, lines up to the triangle on the motherboard socket. This should slip in really easily. Once in, just turn back clockwise on that plastic screw and it should be locked in tight. If you have a secondhand CPU like we do, and you probably will because it's an old CPU, this is a great chance to remove the heatsink compound without bending the pins. It's because it's nice and safe sitting in that socket. Once the CPU is pretty clean, you're good to put the heatsink compound on. The heatsink compound we're using today is Arctic Silver's Ceramic 2 heatsink compound. And don't forget to clean the actual heatsink itself. Once this is done, you're good to reassemble everything. Don't forget to plug the fan back in, and when you put the heatsink on, you want to screw 1, 2, 3, and 4 on the pattern. Everything else, we're just doing the reverse of the disassembly.
This is the point where we put the new ram in and had the old ram out. Once we've got it all back together, we're ready to do the test boot. If everything's gone well, you'll be greeted with the BIOS booting logo. Everything's looking well and looks like we're going to be booting Windows 10, which is a good sign. So the big question is, how much better is the i5-520M over the P6200. In CPU ID, CPU Z, our single scores cores were very, very similar. Only showing a 2.95% improvement, which is going to be seen because they are the same cores basically. Now the big difference is going to be in the multi-core with the hyper-threading, scoring a 40.64% improvement. In 7-zip, we also scored pretty similar with the single core, a little bit better because of the boosts on the i5, but we got a 28.64% increase in performance in single core and an 82.82% increase in the multi-core. Finally, Cinebench R15. We scored 195 points over the 117 points on the Pentium P6200, giving us a 66.6% .6 increase in performance. Now most of this performance increase like we said, is from the hyper-threading that's enabled in the i5. Also, there is an Intel Turbo Boost on the i5 as well, which will give it a little bit more performance increase once again. Why does everyone refer Intel graphics with the CPU? Now, that's because the GPU die lives right next to the CPU die on the same chip, shown right here. Both GPUs are the same architecture, that being both are Intel HD Iron Lake graphics. The only difference is that the i5 has a slightly higher boost clock for the GPU. The i5 GPU clock starts at 500 MHz and can boost up to 766 MHz, where the Pentium starts at 500 MHz just like the i5 and can only boost up to 667 MHz. Later CPUs had the GPU integrated into the same die for Intel. Comparing the GPUs via Fermark benchmark tool, we got 18 points for the i5-520M and 14 points for the Pentium 6200. This gave us a 28.5% increase in performance for the GPU on the HD Iron Lake graphics. Lastly, using Counter-Strike Source's video stress test, the i5-520M scored with the HD graphics from Intel 61.35 points. The Intel Pentium P6200 scored 51.97 points, thus giving the Intel i5 an 18% increase in performance. So if both GPU architectures are exactly the same, why is there such a difference in scores? Now we think some of that's going to be part of that extra 100 megahertz that the i5 has on the GPU clock. The other bit is obviously got to do with the performance increase on the CPU itself. Obviously, with most games and a lot of applications, there's a bit of CPU work that needs to be happening before the GPU gets to process it. So, if there's a bottleneck or something slowing down on the CPU side, of course it's going to show us lower frame rates at the end of the day. So, is this upgrade worth doing? Definitely. Seeing an increase of performance shown by Cinebench of 66.6%, .6%, that's definitely worth it. Now this upgrade cost us $30, that was for the 4GB of RAM and the i5-520M. Now if you're going to throw in that hard drive, the SSD from Western Digital, that's probably about another $30 or so. This thing owes us $60, bucks, Australian. Now it's worth mentioning, if you're going to upgrade to the i7-720QM or one of the QM processors, they do not have an on-CPU GPU. So what does that mean? That means when you put that CPU in, it won't see a video card unless you have a dedicated video card. It's probably worth mentioning that this wasn't the most easiest laptops to put back together. We did struggle with some of the cables and just getting those to sit in there and not fall out again. So don't feel bad if you struggle with that. But with persistence, it can be done. I'm also pretty sure there's worse off laptops out there. So we're yet to find them, but we're sure we'll run into them soon enough. Anyway, that's all we got today for the off bit. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, can you please hit that like button? Always feel free to drop a comment by. We do read these comments at the off bit and we do enjoy seeing what you guys are thinking. And 
if you really have enjoyed this content and you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. We try to release these videos at least once a week at the moment. So, so if you want to keep encouraging us to make these videos, please show your support by joining our community. Hit that subscribe button. All right. Thank you very much for watching once again. And we'll catch you guys next time on The Offbit.